So today we're gonna try to make a cover for the for the battery bank. I'm gonna try to bend this piece of polycarbonate to yeah to shape so that it's uh, covering all the battery cells in the boat. Okay, so the bending is done. I think it turned out pretty good. We won't know until we test it. Test it back at the battery bank, but uh, I think it will be a good protection. So now we're gonna see if this uh, plastic cover fits, right? It's good that it's a bit flexible. This would be really nice. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think so too. And then this is the space where the for the BMS and the BMS and other stuff, yeah. It's a really good protection here. Perfect fit. Also, uh, or you, I haven't done that. Uh, <laughs> uh, changed uh, the cabling here to the BMS and all the other stuff. Yeah, but it's still some. These cables are still gonna uh, be changed. There's some cable missing here. There's still some stuff that needs to be done. So we updated uh, some more cables, starting to looking really nice, except a few, some few cables still need to be changed. Yeah. So now we're satisfied with the cabling for now. It's uh, time to test it. Yeah, time to, to run the capacity test. So let's start up. We charged them yesterday, so they should be pretty much fully charged already. Yeah, we're just gonna top them up before we start the discharge circle. I guess this one should start up now as well. But we're only gonna use this one for now because this one is the only one that we have hooked up to the to the system. This one just has DC power. Okay, so let's just wait for the system to start up here and then we can run the short cycle and make sure that the smart hunt synchronizes at 100% and then it actually, actually says 100% already. Should we charge it up? Yep. Okay, so now we're charging with our short power limit of 6 amps. So we have 1100 watts going in. And now we have, <coughs> we have the BMS controlling. It's basically the BMS that sets the charging voltage and the charging current that's, that's allowed. And then the, the Victron system does whatever it can to fulfill that basically. This is the app for the it's a JK BMS so they, the app for the for the BMS where you can follow all the BMS data. Okay so right now the JK BMS is a I don't know a unit or whatever you say here on the in system and if you go into that one and check parameters you can see that this one is sending the loud charge voltage which is now our basically constant current phase we want to charge to 56 volts probably gonna change that later on, I'm not sure exactly what we're going to charge to, but it seems like a good start for now. We have a 48 volt system, why do we charge up to 56? Mm, 48 volt is just, I mean, basically we will never really be at 48 volt. Our nominal voltage is uh, 3.2 volts per cell times 16, which is... 51.2? <laughs> yeah, well it's 51.2, so our, our nominal voltage of the system is 51.2 volts, so that's basically will be kind of when the battery is rest, in rest. To charge the batteries, to charge them fully charged, we obviously need to charge them to a higher voltage than that. So the curve of the, of the, of the you put in a, uh, a graph of the, of the voltage curve. And what you want to do is basically that you want to take them to somewhere in the knee, in the end of the curve, where 
where the state of charge uh, or where the voltage goes up and you know that the state of charge is, is high or close to 100%. So for ourselves right now we are at uh, 3.41, 42-ish and it, they are very close to fully charged so they will quite quickly go up to 3.5 volts and then the I don't remember what I said now, I think I said like 20 minutes of absorption time so then, then basically the, the charger or the Victron system when we will have more chargers when we will have solar and, and, and other stuff as well we'll keep it to, on that voltage for this time, 20 minutes, minutes ish uh, obviously the current will drop and uh, then it's set so that the sync parameters of the, of the smart shunt which will be our battery monitor is set so that they will synchronize to 100% before this absorption time is, is over so we make sure that we always synchronize 100% when we get to this point yeah, and then we will go into float and you don't, normally you don't really float these type of batteries so this is more of a voltage that will, that's where they are at rest so we don't if we still if we set, let's say that we are in the afternoon we are fully charged already there's still sun outside, but we don't want to use our battery to power the boat and we want to use the sun, but we don't want to charge the batteries. So then we just put them on the level where they... Basically we output the same voltage from the chargers as the, as the batteries are in rest, basically. So let's see. Soon we are fully charged. And then we can start to, to discharge. Cool. Okay, so we are close to fully charged now. I actually increased the charge voltage to 3.6 volts per cell now, just to for this test to really fully charge them. We're probably gonna charge them later, uh, lower, to lower voltage later on. But uh, yeah, so we are at uh, 57.6 volts, a little bit more, and uh, the current has dropped to 2.3 amps. So, so we are definitely fully charged and ready to start the test. So we will uh, disconnect the, our simulated shore power, like that. Okay, so now we're down to our standby consumption. Okay, right, so let's hook up our load then. Okay, so now we're going, uh, it's settling a bit, but 1300 watts on the AC side and, yeah, over 1300 on the DC side actually. 24, 25 amps. Our expected uh, capacity is around 15 kilowatt hours, so this should take uh, a little bit more than seven hours then at uh, at two kilowatts load. So that's that's quite impressive actually. And you understand that it's a lot of uh, stored energy. It's actually reporting quite big deviation in cell voltage now. It's 21 millivolts. I think we're actually going to measure through all cells to see what if if it's uh, if it's actually correct. So far we have 4 millivolts, oh, but they're all dropping at the same time as well a bit. It's, it's a bit too early to measure actually. <laughs> Top's a couple of millivolts difference, but less 1 to 2 millivolts. Okay, so now we have run the capacity test for uh, a little more than an hour. And uh, so far everything looks uh, good. So far we've been using uh, about 46 amp hours. It's very hot in here right now because we have this... Uh, heating uh, furnish thing that we used to test and um, the temperature has uh, really gone up here, <laughs> it's really warm and uh, we also tried to put on this now this nice uh, plastic cover looks yeah. really nice I think that's still just laying here loose but so we need some attachment but I really like the part of, of the visibility as well because then you can see if something is wrong as well and then uh, for future we're gonna paint uh, everything white in the compartment as well. Yeah. The other day, it was not yesterday, but the day before yesterday, we started with a capacity test, but since we don't want it to run it, uh, or when we're not here, we had to pause. Yeah, so now it's been sitting for two days. We've actually lost, I don't remember what we stopped at. Was it like 51% or something like that? Mm, I think so. It says that we're down to 46 now. So we have a standby consumption of roughly 20 watts. Uh, I would say mainly because of the of the MultiPlus inverter. Uh, and when we have uh, the other one connected uh, in parallel, will it double the standby, or will it? They? I don't know actually. I, I hope that there are some logic that I mean, one is will be, will be programmed as master, and the other one will be a slave. And I hope that the slave will be in some kind of sleep state unless it's needed. <laughs> but. Uh, 
But I don't know that. I haven't found anything about that in any documentation. I just assumed that it should be possible to have it that way, but we'll see. Time will tell. But let's uh, connect the load again. Yep. Okay, so now we're back to roughly 2 kilowatts of discharge. So it should take like a little bit more than 3 hours to discharge to zero. So we are at uh, around 15% state of charge, assuming that we actually have a little bit higher capacity than, than what's what the battery cells are sold as. So they are 200 amp hour, 280 amp hours. Nominal, but a lot of reviews online uh, and tests shows that they actually have more capacity than that. So we have actually set our settings now to 310, just to make sure that we can actually really capture all the, the amp hours that we have, and then we will adjust the settings uh, accordingly after this test. But it shouldn't be that much left now. Depending on how, what capacity I actually have, but somewhere around an hour to go. And it's it's getting quite warm in here now, it's like <laughs> close to 30 degrees. It's super hot. Yeah. Kind of kind of being like a, a tropical test as the <laughs> ambient temperature is. It's way warmer than, than what we normally have in Sweden. So now we're uh, closing in. Yep. We are at the cell voltage of 2.75 now. We're still discharging with the... Uh, Two kilowatts, so it's gonna uh, we're gonna hit down the voltage protection very soon. So far, we discharged 291 amp hours. I said that's really good, and the all cell seems very even. We have 150 millivolts of. It clicked. Yeah, that one is complaining oh. about low voltage now. Low battery. Yes, it is. Did you really say what the limit was? It was 2.6, right? Oh. Yeah, that's what we have said now. Yeah. Now it's really one and then we drop really, really soon now. Yeah. <laughs> now it should have dropped, right? Woo! That was it? That was it! Okay, so now we, we got out 292 amp hours yeah. Yeah. from the battery. So, I guess the capacity test is now uh, done. Yeah, 292 amp hours. Next step with the battery is to connect the, yeah, the second inverter. The first next step is to charge it up a bit there now, because we don't want to leave it undischarged. Then we're going to connect the second inverter. And uh, yeah, after that, uh, sometime in uh, the spring, we're going to start taking this apart in this uh, mock-up uh, compartment and uh, put it back in the boat. Or put, not put it back, put it in the boat. There's also going to be some more clean up with the wirings and stuff like that. Just to make everything nice and tidy. Paint it. Mm -hmm.